By the grace of Christ, my dear brethren, let us read today from the book of Isaiah the prophet. Chapter 55, verse 1. The prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 1. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant to you, with you. The sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know. And nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and He will have mercy on him, and to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree, and instead of the brier shall come up the myrtle tree. It shall be the, and it shall be to the Lord for a name and for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Amen. Prophetic word of God that expresses the heart of God. It reveals the heart of God and expresses the will of God and God's intent. And indeed, the will of God and God's intent that has to do with people, and indeed, people who are, who dwell in a desert and wilderness place, alone in the desert, which is terrible. And even more, in uh, people whose life is full of thorns that wounds them and full of briars that afflict them. So God turns His eyes, He pays attention, He observes, He sees, and He sends His Word, a Word that is unique because the thing that God brings forth by the Holy Spirit, which is His Word, People, if, if they listen to this word and believe it, people can enjoy all the promises that are contained in the Word of God. Because the Word of God is active, is live and active. Indeed, if man and any man, in any situation he may be, if he accepts the Word of God as a Word of God that it is, then with amazement, but also with joy, he will see the Word of God working in his life in the exact way that God promises. 
so today, the Word of God is directed to people who are being afflicted. People who are afflicted either by their own fault or by the fault of other people or by any other reason. And these people are found in an environment where, as we said, there are thorns that wherever they may do, it hurts them, it wounds them, and there are also briars that no matter how they move, they just hurt them. And these are not a few people, and they are not only in this world such people, but you find these people everywhere. As on one hand, we all stumble in many things, but this is not the reason. The reason is what the Word of God reveals, that in the world you will have sorrow. That is, it is not possible for you to not have sorrow. The world lies in wickedness. And the Christian is undesirable from the world. So there are such people in the world, but also in the church. So let us see what the Word of God reveals to us and what the Word of God promises us, especially. God cries out. A thing that God often does because He invites. He cries out as He is inviting people. He says, Come to me, all you who thirst. Everyone who thirsts, come. It is terrible for man to be in constant thirst, and, it, and he can't be without thirst if he's in a dry and desolate place. His, th his soul thirsts. And what is next to him is not clean water that uh, quenches a thirst many times, but it is filthy water that makes the situation even worse. And God says there are living waters. Come to the living waters. If you are thirsting, come to the living waters. Indeed, if you come to the living waters, there you will find wine that brings joy to the heart and milk that gives strength to the body. So the calling is sent to those who thirst and the promise is clear. You will find water to quench your thirst, living waters. You will find milk so you can be satisfied and be fed. And you will find wine so that you may rejoice and glorify God. This is the promise, the temptation, I'd say, that God gives to all of us when we live the trial or the temptation or the affliction of our life. Only if you come to the fountain of living waters, only if you come to the living waters, will you then quench your thirst, you will be fed with milk, which is the Word of God, but you will also rejoice with the wine, which is the joy that comes of the Holy Spirit. But the question is, how will God do this? And what will God do? So he says, listen carefully to my word, because from within the word of God come, er, comes everything in our life. God works only with his word. Listen carefully to my word, and then what you eat will be good, but also the abundance, choice food. By listening to the word of God carefully, carefully, and this is the great difference, by listening to the word of God carefully, what God does is he feeds you and the blessing of God comes into your life. Secondly, Incline your ear, open your ears well, and come to me, who I am the fountain of living waters. I am the Savior, I am the Lord, I am God, I am the one who loves you. 
So first of all, listen to my word carefully, and secondly, come to me. And the third is the promise of God, the unique promise of God, because this is the message today, the only promise of God. If you listen to the Word of God carefully, if you turn your ears to the Word of God, then the next thing is that God, through Jesus Christ, will make to you an eternal covenant, an everlasting covenant, the sure mercies of David. And these mercies of David are unique in description. How God gave mercy to this man, David, to this young man, who at an age of 17 years old, he was the most despised, the smallest. He was uh, keeping his father's lambs and sheep. How did God find this man? Let me say it more humanly. How did he discover him? Nothing can hide from God. He sees who is good and he sees who is bad. How did he turn his eyes among all the people of Israel upon this young man? The Word of God says that the Holy Spirit is searching throughout the earth so he can find a person who is, whose heart is perfect so that through him God may be glorified. What is this thing that God saw? And not only he saw him, but he also revealed him to Samuel. He said, this is the, my anointed. This is my special man upon whom I will build my kingdom upon the earth, of which kingdom there will be no end, in eternity, in eternity. How did he discover him? What did he see in him? And Samuel anointed him by the Holy Spirit when he was 17 years old to be king. While Saul was king. This is the mercy of God. God had mercy upon him. God had compassion on him. He visited him. And what he found in this man was his heart. A heart that impressed God. A heart that inspired God. A heart regarding which God cried out and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man according to my heart. He had nothing else, no other special characteristic. <coughs> Humanly, he had nothing better, not a, uh, nor heritage, nor was he strong, nor was he clever, or anything special like that. What God saw in him was his heart. And as I said today, the message is that God is ready to give the sure mercies of David to every person who thirsts for the righteousness of God, that thirsts for the visitation of the Lord. And yes, David, from his, from his natural state, he had such a heart, but God promises us today that He can transform the heart of all of us and turn it into such a heart so that we may live and enjoy the mercies of David, the sure mercies of David, daily. And the conditions are, listen carefully to the Word of God. Draw near to Christ and He will give you the sure mercies of David. It is so simple. It is even more simple than that. Because you won't do it, nor man will do it, but God will do it. And indeed, God will anoint you by the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. 
And from there on, what, what is important is how you will manage the grace, the mercy, and the blessing of God. God will give it to us. God will give us these sure mercies of David with all certainty. But the question is not how easy or difficult. It's very easy. The question is how we will preserve them, how we will, we will manage these things, how we will walk in the sure mercies of David and the absolute blessing of God. Because now, every one of us has the ability to seek the Lord because it is a welcome time in a day of salvation to call upon the Lord because He is near. Now, we have the right, we have the ability, and it is a simple decision that the wicked forsake his way of uh, wickedness and the unrighteous to forsake his unrighteousness among men. But from there on comes the difficult part. What will follow after that? How we will continue after this? Because we are not dealing now only with God. Because God has proven that He is with us but we are dealing with ourselves. How we will manage ourselves in the presence of God. How we will stand as individuals of God who have received mercy and indeed specially mercied and as He regenerated us and our sins have been cleansed, He has filled us in His Holy Spirit and we listen carefully to the Word of God. We draw near to Christ in our place of prayer in our prayer in church, we enjoy the sure mercies of David, the spiritual gifts, the good portions of God. All these things that the Word of God guarantees, we have them. But the difficult part, how we will preserve them. how we will continue to enjoy, how we will live the sure mercies of David in our daily life, in our life in general. What are the sure mercies of David, for starters? They are the absolute blessing of God. This starts from the choice, because you did not choose me, says Christ, I have chosen you. He came and He found us in the place where we were, in sin and injustice and in wickedness and transgressions. He came and He found us. As God sent Samuel and He found David, He came and found us. He sent Christ and He found us. <laughs> and afterward, He brought us close to Him. And then he began to work a marvelous work. But it doesn't matter how God works, which is important, because God works wondrously, because God is love. God is perfect. God loves us. God knows all things for us. God is almighty. But the most important thing is how we respond to the presence of God to the blessing of God, to the grace of God, to the mercy of God. How do we respond? And the whole secret is our will, our desires, and our decisions. And indeed, by knowing as the Word of God assures us, that our heart is deceiving above all things and desperately wicked. The Apostle Paul describes this thing possibly better than anything. I tame my body and I bring it into subjection. If we do not tame the desires of the flesh, 
the desires of our eyes and the arrogance of this life constantly at every moment then the Christian becomes an animal and he walks according to his own desires the result being that he loses the presence of God he loses the instruction of God and he loses, and this is terrible, he loses the sure mercies of David. The Word of God assures us that what we want, the sure thing is that God doesn't want it. And what we think is right, and we walk the way that we think, the sure thing is that God doesn't want it, doesn't think it. Because the heart of God is something else, and the heart of man is something else. The Spirit of God is something else, and the Spirit of man is something different. This is a, a sure certainty that if we do not realize it, we cannot overcome the greatest enemy of ours, which is our own self. We cannot submit our desires and our thoughts. We cannot submit them. It's impossible. And no matter how much God may try with His Word and with the power of the Holy Spirit to direct our will toward the will of God and our ways toward His ways, we fail if we do not realize deep in our heart that He is God and we are men. If we do not realize deep in our heart our nature, and our nature is a human nature, our nature is weak, the devil is able to lead man astray and destroy him very easily with various clever and stunning and clever wheels. We have no other defense. One is our defense, and that is the Word of God. We have no other strength. One is our strength, and that is the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We do not have another path. One is our path, and that is Jesus Christ. If we do not take advantage of these things spiritually, then suddenly we will discover that we are far from the sure mercies of David. I repeat this. That is where the mercies of David are. The perfect and absolute blessing. If we do not understand the Word of God, the power of the Gospel, the instructions of the Holy Spirit, so that we may adapt our journey, our course, our life, our heart, our thoughts through the Word of God and make our heart to be according to the heart of God, then the sure mercies of David will be far away from us, other people will be enjoying them, and we will be alone, and we will end up, who? A Christian now, a born-again Christian who is baptized in the Holy Spirit will end up being having thorns and briars all around us. We will be wounded in our walk. We will hurt. In the wilderness, in the wilderness, is not among many people. The wilderness is distancing yourself from Christ. If we do not give heed to the Word of God, to hear it and execute it. If we surpass the Word of God, if the Word of God leaves from us without transforming us, without changing our heart, if the fullness of the Holy Spirit passes without giving us, God giving us His power, then the sure mercies of David will be far from us. 
We will see the mercies but not enjoy them. We will see them and we will be envious of them. We will see them and we'll get angry. And we'll go against the Lord in the end. We'll go against men. And it is not that our life will become only full of thorns and briars, but we also will be full of thorns and briars. And we will wound others. We will hurt others. May God protect us, my dear brethren. It is The Christian life is not easy. By the grace of Christ and the love of God the Father with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, it is possible, very possible, as long as man is ready to transform himself based on the hearing of the Word of God, based on the voice of the Holy Spirit, and based on his heart, which is completely submitted to the Word of God. It is terrible, I'd say, terrible, that in the midst of such so many goods and riches, the sure mercies of David, for example, you to be dead, I to be dead. And it is easy for us to fall into this trap. It is easy for God to distance His sure mercies of David from our life. It is easy for our life to be filled with thorns and briars. For that reason, our Lord Jesus Christ says, Keep watch, be careful, and pray. The person who is careful in the Word of God, who is watchful in the Word of God, and who prays in the presence of God, then to Him, and only Him, the Word of God will come, coming forward out of the mouth of the Lord, and it will bring to pass the will of God in our life, and He, he will prosper in our life, this Word, so that this person, only this person, will go forth in joy, and he will be led with peace. And the transformation that God makes, instead of thorns, which wound people, there will be cypress trees, which is the glory of man. Instead of thorns, there will be myrtle trees that smells beautifully. So God calls us, God promises us the sure mercies of David. And he confirms that these things are for you, for us. With one condition, with you will listen to the Word of God carefully to execute it. You will draw near to Christ carefully so you can meet Him. And you will carefully examine your heart so you can see if, if it is willing to do the things that God wants and your thoughts, whether you are intending and deciding according to God's decisions. Then, God will transform everything. Everything. Whatever you don't like in your life, whatever you cannot correct, God will correct everything. Your personal and your family's matters, everything. <laughs> because He's the Almighty God, because He is love, and He is ready to intervene. My dear brethren, let us not lose our time with things that are vain, with things that are foreign and are separate from the Word of God, with thoughts and desires that are our own. 
with logic and decisions that are our own. Let us approach the Word of God. Let us listen to the Word of God carefully so that we may see the wondrous things that the Word of God does when we approach Him so we can obey Him. I want to tell you with all the power of my soul, it is not difficult for God to correct, to transform, first of all, to correct all things in your life. It's very easy. It depends on you. The things that you can't correct, the things that appears that cannot be corrected, God can correct these things and make them the sure mercies of David. Believe that only God is able to transform all things in your life to take away the thorns and the briars and to give you th um, myrtle trees and cypress trees in your life he is a God who is willing he is a God who is able and he is the God who knows how to wait he is the true God Amen <laughs>